This is our first video for the spring semester, second section of digital art, and we're going to be our freeware section. And our first project that we get points for, creative project that we're doing that I'm demoing, is going to be called Exercise 1. So to get to it, we can go to Unit Modules. And this is our introduction to compositing. So you can go through it the full way, always through going through the units. So we're going to go to Unit 2. We finished our orientation. And you'll see all the pages in the unit here. You'll also see them navigated here. There's only three. And if you want to jump right to where the assignment is, you can do that. You can also go from the home page, you know, after we've been introduced to it. You can always just scroll down underneath unit modules to assignments and then just go directly to the project in question. So we start with exercise one. All right. So the unit module has a few advantages. It will give you kind of the big themes first, like what you're supposed to learn from this, and then what you're supposed to deliver to demonstrate your knowledge, what you'll get scored on, all of that. So this is our overview page. It gives you a link to Photopea. So it's not a bad idea just to click that link, and it will open Photopea for you in a new tab, because that's what we're going to be using for this. Next is going to tell you what we're trying to learn with this. We're going to review what raster imaging is. It's pixel-based imaging. And we're going to learn more and more about the basics of compositing, which is layering pixeled images on top of each other. We're going to utilize appropriate image research and sourcing resources. You know, either Pixabay. Let's go ahead and click on Pixabay, which is an image search site. But this is different than Google Images because this is a Creative Commons open search site. So it means everything that's here has been donated by artists and is allowed for you to use for your own use, both commercial and personal use. The only thing that this, that the Pixabay Creative Commons open license does not allow you to do is to copy something exactly and then profit off of it. But it does allow you to take something, change it a little bit, and then profit off of it. And that's the only way it's slightly different as a Pixabay license than a Creative Commons open license or a public domain license. Going back though, that is not the only source because you're allowed to do your favorite cartoon images. Favorite cartoon images are owned by some property, you know, whether they're published in newspapers, whether they're um, put through television distributors or through television studios, someone owns the rights to those cartoons, right? So if you find them on Pixabay, someone's breaking the law. And they're, they're not supposed to get through the filters. Because anything on Pixabay has to be voted in by its members. And it also is going to be high enough quality and all of that. We'll be using Pixabay a lot when we do our actual assignments. But for today, we could use something that's just the regular image search, which is Google Images. So let's open a new tab, use a little plus sign, go to Google. When you get to google.com, you'll see in the upper right-hand corner there's an image link. You can also just search for Google Images. How do you know you're in a Google image search bar rather than just a regular Google search bar? There'll be a little camera in it. All right. Let's start Google Images just so you know what we're using this for and how it's similar to Pixabay. Type your favorite cartoon into there. And if you don't have a favorite cartoon, a cartoon you're at least aware of. But it should not be 3D animation. It should have lines. So I'm going to put get fuzzy. And I might even put get fuzzy characters. You know, I can use some of the suggestions here. Now let's try the same thing in Pixabay. Get fuzzy characters. So in a Google image search, if I scroll down to the end of the first page, I can say see more. It will give me millions of results, right? Way too many to look through. And it'll keep saying, keep showing me more, keep showing me more. What's great about Google image search and Pixabay is we can use what are called tools. So if you click on tools, we can limit what we're seeing. And we only want to use images that are high enough resolution for our printing needs and that have clean black and white line art. 
So the first thing we're going to do is this drop down under tools for size, and we're going to say only large. Unfortunately, Google has changed this tool. It used to be there are several options, and you could do like over 100 megabyte images, over 300 megabytes. Now it's just large, medium, small. So what large means is that the images are at least 1,000 pixels in one dimension, which is not bad. Right? It's not the greatest, but it's, it's helpful. Next, we're going to go to color. And we're not looking for full color images. We're looking for black and white images for this project. So we're basically looking for, for like coloring book images of these characters. And this limits our searches significantly, right? Did you click on I did. So, and you'll, you'll see uh, highlights in blue, the settings I have. So now I'm on large and black and white. Instead of millions of images, I have like, even if I say get more, and then it quickly goes off the rails. <laughs> so you maybe don't say get more. And then you might decide, okay, well, get fuzzy was a great idea, but it's a little too limited in what's out there. But you, you're going to need five sources. So let's see. What if I take out characters, but I still keep it large and black and white? Now I have a, a lot of options, but they're all comic strips. I don't love that. So how about we do Garfield? And we do large. And we do black and white. And now I've got a lot more examples of characters with that line art. Let's go to Pixabay. Did it give me, from all of their images, if I hit return, any Git Fuzzy? No. Does it give me any Garfield? It probably will, but it shouldn't. <laughs> so these are Creative Commons, oh, that's pretty good. Creative Commons uh, open sources that use a tag of Garfield. But this does not infringe on Garfield's rights, right? At least the the jury that allowed this to come through didn't think so but you'll notice we don't have line art what we do have is if i want to look for a fat cat and then i want to the tools for pixabay are right here if i want to limit that to just illustrations for instance under color that are just black and white this is what i get so what if I just look for cat, cat illustrations that are black and white? This is what I get. Lots and lots of line art examples. Seven pages. So what's the difference between these? All of these have been vetted for quality and will be at least a thousand pixels. And will often be vector graphics as well when you're talking about line art, which is the highest quality digital image. And these are free for your use under what's called the Pixabay license, which is like a Creative Commons license, except that you, you're you not uh, welcome to take it and then sell it directly as it is for profit and copyright it. So it's limited reuse only if you don't change it. Okay. I really like that, though. It actually reminds me of Felix the cat. I like a lot of cartoons. So if I go to tools, large, we learn a lot by repetition, color, black and white. Now I get only images that are a thousand pixels in, in at least one dimension by something else and that have the tag of black and white. It doesn't mean that color isn't allowed in them. It just means that they have a tag that's helpful. So that is an image search. You can use between Pixabay and Google Images for this if you want. We're going to become familiar with layer blending modes. 
in PhotoP, which have to do with the way the, the pixels are shown. We're going to use something called multiply mode. You'll see what I mean. And we're going to understand how to organize, change the order, and move selections between raster image layers. Using raster imaging is all about layers. And compositing especially is all about layers. Controlling each layer, understanding how to alter it. To do this, we're going to look at past instructor and student examples. I'm going to create this demo video. You can review it for your use. And then our task is to deliver a finished exercise number one by next class. So let's move on to past examples. This is the bare minimum to do it just as black and white. And to follow the requirements, you need to composite at least five different references together. You can do more than that, but not less. This is a pass-fail exercise, which means it's out of two points. Zero points for not turning anything in. One point for turning something in that doesn't meet all the requirements yet. Two points for meeting all the requirements. The requirements are it composites at least five images into your own original, what I call, line art jumble. And with the right resolution, the right quality. If you want more examples than I give just on the unit module introduction, you can click on the Imgur page. These are students who liked their project enough to include it in their, their like end portfolio. And these are on different themes. So this is one that took favorite cartoons. And you can maybe recognize, you know, Spider-Man, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America. This kind of jumbles all the Avengers together, the Hulk. But what we're really looking for is line art. This does it with Transformers. This does it with Winnie the Pooh. We'll also have the option to add color to it, and I'll show you that next class. But we start by making it all black. This is Looney Tunes. I don't know what that is, but it's fun. SpongeBob, etc. Some instructor examples. Look, I've already done Garfield. Can't do Garfield. Calvin and Hobbes, my all-time favorite. But Felix the Cat will be interesting. All right. So, just because Git Fuzzy didn't have enough. So that often happens when you're compositing. Just like in regular collage, you're limited somewhat to the source images you can find. The other link I have under the past student and instructor examples is a direct link to our YouTube where you can look for exercise one examples from this semester or from past semesters. So exercise one, let's say from fall 20, 2022, is right here. And there's a link of six 15-minute videos, or that last one's only eight minutes, where it shows the process. and posting it and all that stuff. All right. So lots of resources for you as part of the unit description. Now let's go right to the project. So we are going to do a line art jumble. We do not need to do a band book theme, though you can if you like. In some ways, it's, it's nicer to do something that's based on cartoon imagery you like because it helps us focus just on the aesthetic quality of the line art. So some of my Professional examples I'll share with you. This is an artist named Arturo Herrera who works out of Chicago and kind of made a name for himself in the 90s doing these large wall paintings and cutout installations using Disney line art from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the first Disney feature film. So this is one example. Pretty bold because Disney is the most litigious of really any corporation out there today. And so how does Arturo Herrera avoid upsetting Disney and getting sued for copyright infringement. He is really transforming this line art. Even though he's not creating the line art himself, he is arranging it, distorting it, making it into an original composition. So that you look at it and you say, oh, that's something familiar about that. And then if you put it together slowly, oh, and if you know animation history and stuff, you can kind of guess where it's from. But it's its, it's, its own use of that kind of line. So he is confident that no jury would say 
that this artist has